crazy weekend, but we're here for Military Monday. We've got some amazing veterans in store for you to set the record straight and get to the point on what's going on with the riots and the state of our country. We're going to fix all those rumors about the military being activated and what's going on on the streets, what you should be listening to and what you shouldn't. Stay tuned because we have an amazing show coming up next. We have a great show for you guys today. We're excited to have a returning guest, Mr. Rod Rodriguez, on our show. We're going to talk about everything that's been going on this weekend with riots on the front page of every paper in our country, leading the headlines and everywhere. There's a lot of misinformation involving our military, the National Guard and Reserves. I wanted to bring Rod on the show to clarify exactly what can be done so you guys have what's true and what's false from what's being shared with you on these wonderful devices that we get all of our information from now. So let's welcome to the show, my good bud, Rod Rodriguez. Hey Rod, Thanks, how you Rod. doing bud? I'm doing good brother. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Uh, well, I felt it was important. There's so much misinformation that's out there. And you know, you and I, with our military background, we know that the Lance Corporal underground is one thing, but the, the journalism folks out there with zero military background seem to be since Thursday evening spewing out a lot of misinformation. One is that we could suddenly just activate the, the 82nd Airborne, not to pick on those brave, awesome screaming eagles, but you know they've been kind of targeted the last few days that they're going to get activated and sent in to Minnesota to battle the protesters. Let's start with that one. What's your thoughts on that as number one is, I mean, wouldn't you say this is just a, a tad bit crazy? I mean, it's hard to believe so, that people are number one are thinking it's that easy for our military to come in. So I, first of all, I want to applaud every one of those Twitter users that are out there right now. More cameras, hold the world accountable. There's a re so we're, we're watching police some police and i am not anti-police i'm very pro-police if somebody breaks into my house i'm not calling the neighborhood watch i'm calling the police one of my very good friends is a sheriff's deputy um i train with police in jujitsu so <clears throat> much love to the law enforcement community there are like in every community the military has some bad apples the uh the government has bad apples and the police have bad apples but there are also also a majority of people trying to do their job and do it the right way. When you have police officers shooting civilians with paintball uh, guns and 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 uh, pepper spray that are just filming, they will be held accountable. The, the world is watching. And I think this is important for us to understand. The world is watching us right now. Everybody with the phone, everybody on Twitter, everybody on Facebook, the world is watching. We're, this is going to be documented. This is the most widely documented. It, it's going to continue to be increasingly documented. All these riots, every uh, protest. This is good to be documented. We need to know that, that this is happening. Now, the violence, definitely not good. 100% not good. Um, when we talk about bringing the military in, that is... A bad idea straight up i'll tell you right now that terrible idea not what you want to do we are talking about one of the major arguments with the police has been their training we have a militarized police departments and this is why they they go to violence first because they're being taught that's how you deal with your community violence on violence and you you show your dominance what do you think the military is going to do i mean if you deploy the 82nd Airborne Division, you deploy the Marines to keep the peace, that's not what we do. That is not the objective of the military unit. That's not the objective of our military. It's not to protect the peace. It's to win peace. That's our job. We win peace. We go somewhere. We dominate. We establish order that way. We don't go in. We, the government doesn't do public outreach. There is no 
uh, hey, we're going to go into Iraq and, you know, kind of, you know, explain to the people, hey, this is what we're going to be doing. And, hey, guys, can you please be in your houses from nine to five uh, until we establish order? No, that's why we have tanks. That's why we have the rifles that we carry. Um, Not once in my entire career have I ever been issued non-lethal rounds. Not once. Deployed several times. We don't get non-lethal rounds. Some people do. They talk about the MPs. They're talking about this. Folks, when the government intervenes with active duty military, it's going to get bad. It's going to, so my, and will it work? Absolutely. Do I think the 82nd Airborne Division can establish peace? Or I should say, what, can the 82nd stomp out the rioters? 150% yes, but you will not like how they do it. I like the way you said that. The, in, and America doesn't know, you know, they don't understand what our true mission is. When you think of a infantry division like the 82nd, if you think of the first Marines, you know, or out of even the Marines that are out of Lejeune, the second Marines, you don't want our warriors on the street doing our wartime jobs because we clear no. streets differently in Afghanistan and Iraq than we do in our own hometown. And this is our home soil. We're not supposed to be used that way. The National Guard is doing a great job. We saw it last night in Minneapolis. They had a show of force and it was done correctly, which should have been done long ago. But I think the biggest problem we have is there's a lot of interference. So you talked. we've talked about the 82nd. But let's talk about another thing that came up. And you and I have talked about this when I first spotted it and it hit my news feed. The use of drones by yeah. Customs and Border Patrol over a, an American city to what has been described as <clears throat> helping law enforcement out. Looking at that mission, I'm struggling to find where Customs and Border Patrol have any mission capability with inside a U.S. city that number one has state police. They are able to call forward for the National Guard. If the Guard wants to use drones for their protection, I think that there's a, a fine line there where I get that. But Customs and Border Patrol just scheduling flights and flying over in a circle, monitoring certain cities, which I don't believe they were used in Los Angeles, which to me has now suffered some of the worst of the brunt of the violence, and it's only getting worse. There were some all out crazy fights during broad daylight yesterday with officers surrounded. I mean, I was listening on the scanner and I was blown away. These officers were trapped uh, for a long time. Yeah. And I mean, again, it brings up your subject of think about that, Rod. You surround the 82nd Airborne. You surround a unit on patrol. <laughs> okay, first of all, it's good not, not going to happen. Yeah, good luck, luck with that. that. <laughs> if you think a group of civilians are going to surround a uh, infantry platoon and that you're going to pin them down, good luck with that. Yeah, yeah it's not going to fare well for you. Keep playing Call of Duty. You're going to yeah. be greatly it, disappointed it, it that uh, like not, Call of Duty is going to hurt. <laughs> it doesn't work that way, folks. So th there's two things you got to look at here. So first of all, the there's a danger. There's a, we're, if we put our active duty folks on the ground, we have to change their tactics. We're, we're taking them out of an element that we train day in, day out. This is how you do your job in Iraq, in Afghanistan, against a, an enemy that wants to kill you. You have to kill them first. Now you're going to take them, put them in Los Angeles, put them in Minneapolis and say, okay, guys, uh, rules of engagement are really going to be different here. Plus, you can't just go and do the way that we've been training all this time. So now we're putting them in danger because... We're telling them you can't do your job the way you've been training to do it. So we got to have you do your job a completely different way. Oh, also in a live environment, you're putting civilians and our troops in danger. Now, if things hit the fan and you really got to do what you got to do, then you have to understand what they're going to do to accomplish the mission and they'll do it. Now, as far as these, these drones are concerned, now I can understand maybe the idea was, Police don't have a Predator drone. The National Guard does not have access to a Predator drone. Most likely that unit does not have access to it. And it's a huge pain in the butt to, to arrange all that stuff. But if you have a working relationship already with 
the Customs and Border Patrol guys, hey, do you have a drone? Let's work together and get that thing up in the air so we can get eyes on. I can see that. Now, I know a lot of people, and even myself, I kind of had this, this inclination, this knee-jerk reaction, like, holy crap, that's a predator. Those things can kill people fast. They can. But it's the designation of the flight, of the, of the aircraft. Uh, predator doesn't mean it's going to go out and kill people. It means it can. It can carry a payload, but it can also carry cameras. So I'm not going to to go into the conspiracy realm and say, well, this was a test run to see if they could ice people. Yeah, they could. I mean, 100%. They use these things all over the world uh, in, effort, in Iraq and Afghanistan to neutralize targets. But they also use it for observation. So I think that's what we have to remember. They were using it as an observation deck or and uh, as an observation platform. But we go back to some of these civil liberties arguments. Some of these tech companies have been wanting to put those static balloons. If you've ever been stationed at Fort Huachuca, there's a big white balloon up in the sky and it monitors everything. There's a great podcast from Radio Lab where they talk about the company, the aerostat company that does that technology. They wanted to put one of these th things up in every city in America, every major city. So what this will do is it would record everything going on in your city. Your car gets stolen, you call the police. They pull the footage. They could literally go back 24, 48 hours and track where your car was stolen from all the way to where it went. Okay. You want to witness uh, uh, somebody gets brutally murdered outside. You can watch. Go back and see where the guy came from. Zoom in. What does he look like? What car did he get into? You could solve so many. Children go missing every year. We can stop so much of that. But people complained that this is against our civil liberties. Uh, I should not be under observation unless I'm under a uh, unless I'm being investigated for a crime. Okay, so that's why we don't have these these aerostats. That's why you don't have cameras. That's why we don't have observation. But how many people would think twice about the crime they're about to commit? If you're a bad officer and you want to commit police brutality, you might think about that aerostat. You might think about what's going to happen. They're, we're already videotaping on Twitter. We have Everybody has a video camera. Look what's happening now. So I think this opens a bigger discussion. This opens a bigger argument about do we need high-level surveillance? Do we need to have a camera on every street corner? Will that make us safer? Does that impede on our civil liberties? And how does it, how is that going to be more intrusive than the 82nd showing up at your doorstep? True. And, and you bring up some interesting points because people all want freedom, right? Freedom is one of those things that we, you know, are, we're guaranteed, right? We're told from birth our Bill of Rights. It's interesting that you look at other countries that have cameras everywhere. Uh, I'll talk about our friends in the UK. Uh, they have record low gun violence, uh, lots of respect. Uh, they're, they don't have this thing called police brutality because they're on camera everywhere. All of their cities are heavily monitored. And I think it's funny that we live in this entitlement of America where it's like, I don't want this. So you want to be safe, but you want to be able to do shady behavior. It doesn't make sense to me. What You got to decide what you want. For my safety, I want cameras everywhere. I'm also not doing anything illegal out in public. I'm not, you know, trying to rob people or like we've seen, you know, another, you know, incident filmed on a cell phone. Multiple cell phones now have come forward with footage. Even a security cam footage I saw just yesterday shows this murderer, this murderous cop. And by the way, I'm going to quote Mike the cop when I say this. Good cops hate bad cops. So I'm by no means saying every police officer is bad when, I, when I'm talking right. about. I'm talking about this murderous person who, by the way, karma was good on Friday to him. Not only did he get charged with third degree murder and manslaughter, he also got filed divorce papers from his wife. So boom, good job for you, sweetie. She did the right thing. But I saw the footage just yesterday of him wailing on Mr. Floyd in the back of his car, just yeah. beating on him. I mean, you could just see him swinging away. The dude clearly, I mean, 12 incidents, just like we had uh, the other day, we had a retired NYPD detective, John Salerno on, talking about 
nothing he did was right, and the other three just standing by. And of course, that brings up a whole nother episode that I'll bring you yeah. back on. Well, we can talk about why those other three haven't been charged yet. We got one in jail, but the other three roam in the streets. Uh, you know, but let's 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 touch on one thing before we wrap up here. The White House, which for me was the first time I've seen a mob get to the point where the White House goes on complete lockdown, calls in every Secret Service agent that they have in Washington, D.C., and they have an all-out issue in the front of the White House. Well, I don't know if you want to call that the front. Depends on where you, what your idea of the front of the White House is. Uh, but that, what is that? Uh, I forget the name of the park that's right in front of the White House. It's not where the Christmas tree is. It's on the other side. Uh, it's, neither of them have traffic in front of them. I know if you watch West Wing, you're like, but I saw cars go by. They don't. Uh, you know, those big fights. What's your thoughts on that? I mean, to me, there's protesting. And I guess my question is this. There's protesting, which I'm 100% believe protesters have the right for a peaceful protest, especially when it comes to this matter. I think this matter, racism in our country has gone on for hundreds of years. It's never been resolved. It's the biggest black eye we have when it comes to our country's history. As a Guy, a white Caucasian in his mid 40s. I've seen racism. I, I have not had it done to me, but I've been around my friends and it doesn't even have to be my African American friends. It could be anybody who's not a white person hanging out with me. I've seen the comments where some people just think it's allowed just to come out of your mouth. And it's just like, hey, just because my skin color is the same, I don't want to hear your racist crap. Right. Yeah. These are the protesters aren't the problem. It's these groups and i'm gonna loot law i mean everybody wants to kind of go it's antifa and, and i'm like look it's all of them a hate group is a hate group just put a name in front of it what i mean what's your thoughts on the white house number one being almost overrun friday evening and two do you believe that the protesters are doing their job they're being incited by a whole nother group of individuals who are here for complete chaos okay so i i, I don't feel like the white house is almost overrun um i very much doubt I mean, you would need you would need a very well coordinated, large group of people, well trained to to take the White House. Um, what you saw was a reaction to a group of people, and the White House should be applauded. The security should be applauded. They didn't kill everyone. Um, that capability yeah. is there. They could have. This could have gone way worse. This could have been a massacre. The restraint from law enforcement. The restraint from those highly trained you don't go and you don't guard the white house um that's not your entry level job you work to that you are a professional you were hand picked to go do those types of jobs and what we saw was that level of professionalism those officers the secret service the military folks that work there this was restraint and it was done correctly i think now as far as the the rioters or the protesters. Every American should be able to protest. The problems that we are seeing today are uh, in great, these, these are systemic problems. These are problems that America faces. I'm a Hispanic male. I've, I've been on the pointy end of racism. This is why I love new media. This is why I love Twitter. This is why I love Facebook. This is why I love podcasts. I don't need the, first of all, my podcast is not FCC regulated. My podcast doesn't have censorship. I can say whatever I want on my show. You can say whatever you want on your show. You should have every right to say what you want to say on Twitter, on Facebook, on your social media platforms. And you should be held accountable to it. If Twitter wants to fact check me, fact check me. Go for it. And if they say, you know what? You're wrong. We're, we're going to ban you. Cool. That's your platform. I, I, I asked to be on it. You let me. I violated the terms. You don't like it? All right. I go find another platform. Or here's one. Make a platform. If you feel that your views aren't being respected, go start a platform. You're telling me there isn't some tech guy who shares your views? Go start your own platform. It takes so little money to start a podcast, an app, whatever it is. Go do it. Go make it. Go be the next Twitter. Go be the next Dorsey. Go be the next Zuckerberg. If you got what it takes. We need these platforms. We need that, that ability to talk. We need the ability to create the platforms that we want to talk on. 
So I believe, I sincerely feel that the, the cure to racism, the cure to our problem, and what we're seeing today with these videos, it's not about just police brutality. It's not just about racism. It's about being, it's about being a dick. It's about being a jerk. Don't be a bad person. Because guess what? There are cameras. What do you think this man, this uh, this officer, the one that that, that uh, killed Floyd, what do you think his grandchildren will think of him someday? What do you think your grandchildren would think of your racist rant that you did when you were 16 years old and yet you your friends had it on video? This is, we are living in a new level of accountability. Every word that you and I are saying right now will, can, and will be used us, will be used against us in the court of public opinion. I mean, we just saw that, uh, was it last week? Jimmy Fallon had to apologize for something he did, what, three decades ago for a video where he put blackface on in 2000 on the show. You know, with Chris Rock's permission, still did it, but it came up and bit him in the face. We've seen the same thing with Twitter with the legendary, I'm laughing just thinking of Kevin Hart, but Kevin Hart's gone through this, right? A tweet he made so early in his career cost him the Oscars, right? It really, I mean, what it, you're saying is, is yeah. so true. It's about responsibility, but we also have to learn. We're, we're, I feel like this this media, our new media, is helping us grow. We are growing as a country. Believe it or not, despite the fact the, the world looks like it's on fire right now, we're actually living in the golden age of humanity. We have never had this unprecedented level of peace in the world. You think the world's on fire. Historically, it hasn't been. Historically, it was on fire way before. Terrible wars and atrocities. Today, right now, we live in the golden age of humanity. There is more peace in the world than there has ever been. There is less violence in the world than there has ever been. We are living in a world where technology and medicine are evolving leaps and bounds. It seems like the world's on fire because we have those phones. I was trying to find my phone. We have these guys right here. This little guy right here tells me, did you know this is happening over here? Did you know this is happening over there? This is happening because it takes my world and it collapses it. It makes my global, it takes my, my universe and turns it into this. Now I'm a global citizen. Now I'm a community citizen. I know what happens in my home city as much as I know what's happening in China, in Australia, in Antarctica. That makes us accountable. But it also opens the door for forgiveness. We have to start using our brains. We have to start applying some human sentiment to this to go, hey, wait a minute. Chris Rock said this how long ago? How, I mean, uh, uh, Kevin Hart did this how long ago? How old was he? Jimmy Fallon did this how long ago? What I said as a 15-year-old kid should not be the thing that keeps me from having a job when I'm 20. 25 because we have to accept hey maybe you grew up man maybe you developed maybe to you were raised by racists then and you came to your senses as an adult like so many people have i i so agree with you man i mean there, I, I i'm just like yep you're right there's uh, there's nothing else to say when that comes to that i mean if you look at it that way just to be brutally honest that's the thing that I've seen in the last few days is a majority of us all agree yeah. that what happened to this officer, what this officer did was murder. And we want to see this broken system fixed. And clearly there's departments that out there are very corrupt. We know this. I mean, we saw it in the 90s with L.A. L.A., anybody who works for that department knows the Rampart story. It's 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 i mean it's the last time we had a major riot was la now you're seeing it in 30 cities and people want to point and make this political this has nothing to do with politics this absolutely doesn't now that will be our final thing that we'll talk about is the one person who our country needs as a leader and I, i'm not going to get political on this but when our country is out of spinning out of control in ways that most people haven't seen a lot of millennials have never seen anything like this uh, gen, the, what are the Gen Zers? Uh, they haven't seen anything like this. This is absolute mayhem and chaos, like no, like no other time have have seen. 
coming straight off of a pandemic that two weeks ago we were being told, be careful, wear a mask everywhere. And now those same cities are on fire, police cars on fire, people throwing Molotov cocktails in police vans with police officers in them. Yeah. It, it's complete anarchy. We have to come together, but we haven't heard. And as of us taping this, we still have not heard from the White House. In fact, the only comments to come out of the White House, and I know you probably can't comment on this, so I will, uh, but a lot of the comments coming out of the White House are inflammatory. And I don't believe as a leader you should be inflaming the, you don't throw diesel fuel on a fire that needs to be extinguished. Small business have suffered enough in our country at this time. We do not need to sit here and be like, hey, if you jump the fence, it's an obvious, you jump the fence at the White House, prepare for what you're going to get. It is right. like any other government building. You break into, trust me, do the same thing at the Pentagon, see what happens. I can tell you, it's not going to be a good, it, the ending is not going to be good for you, jump on that wall. I mean, this has nothing to do with the protesters, but inflaming them and pissing them off or calling out other mayors and governors. I mean, you want to complain about left and the right, I think the governor uh, or the mayor of Atlanta had the best speech I've seen during this whole thing. Like people need to be home, you know, Martin Luther King. And I know that there's other people counter that, Oh, Martin Luther King wasn't respected in the sixties and bah, 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 bah. everybody's throwing Martin Luther King out there. And yeah. I'm like, well, who else are we supposed to show as a leader of the free world? We're looking for guidance from our leadership to be like, everybody take a, mo a moment and, and pause for the cause. Instead, we don't get that. We get, 13 year old tweets, somebody who acts like they're strung out on Mountain Dew after playing, you know, Call of Duty for four days. That's the reaction we're getting. Not a leader, not someone there with his collar opened up, like, look, America, we all just need to breathe. This is going, you know, we're going to work on this together. So I, I'll be honest with you. I think America's too smart for that. We're too smart for it. We, we've seen this from how many politicians? We've seen this from how many people? The guy comes out, and I'm not talking. Look, I don't care really what the president says or does. This is that's his thing. You do whatever you want on Twitter. Don't tell me how to run my Twitter. I won't tell you how to run your Twitter. Um, <laughs> what you want, I, I don't look to to him or anybody for leadership. I want to know who's going to rise to the cause. Who's going to rise up and say, "I'll." I'll take the I'll take the lead on this. I'll take point. We have rioters, and a lot of those people are opportunists. Opportunists. They don't care about Floyd. They don't care about justice. They don't care about racism. They care about breaking in to a target. They care about spray painting something. They care about being part of a of a thing. It's opportunity. But there are so many of those protesters who do care about what happened. They care about police brutality. They care about freedoms. They care about poverty in their communities. They care about what's going on. I wish people would use the technology that they have, their Twitter, their Facebook, their Snapchat, their TikTok. Dance your happy butt to the ballots. Vote those people out of office. If you don't like the system, change the system. That's what it's there to do. Gerrymandering won't work if everybody shows up. If you will show up to a riot, if you'll show up to hold a sign, show up to punch yes or no, show up to punch your candidate in. That's how you win. That's what they don't want you to do. That's what the system doesn't want you to do. The system is happy to see you riot. The system is happy to see the status quo continue to be the status quo. We have people in Congress and senators who have been there for 30, 40 years. There have been, there are some people in office right now who probably, I believe some actually voted against the civil rights acts. People who in who have been on camera that have video and audio of them using the N-word and calling Hispanics uh, uh, terrible names and talking about the poor people. Cool. All right, you rioted. You burned down some parts of your city. Bad move. Let's come back from it. Go and vote. Vote. Use your phones. Use your Twitter. Use your Facebook. Project. Use that. 
get people. I wish, I wish whoever was out there like, come on, let's go do this. Let's go burn this target down. I wish that dude was like, let's go get in the buses, get in the buses. We're going to go vote. I want streams of voters. I want millions of people. I would love to see this next election cycle. The president, Congress, everybody. I don't care whether it's left or right. I don't care who wins. Honest to God. Left, right, cool. As long as people came to vote. This 2%, 10% of America that, that decides what happens to the rest of us is insanity. It's insanity. Vote. And here's the other thing. Don't just vote. Run. Run for public offices, folks. There's a reason that some of these states, think about this, Eric, we have states right now being run by felons. They're felons. We have people that are in Congress that are given security clearances who have drug charges. Let me tell you, if I have a drug charge, I lose my clearance like that, gone, finito, and I'll never get it back. Never get it back. You can run for Congress have a felony drug charge and chances are you're going to get your, you're going to get your security clearance because you, you have, you, you got to be part of those committees. You got to be in the know. Explain that to me. That's insanity. Run for, run for public office, use your social media, have a voice, stop burning stuff down, start a podcast, start a YouTube channel, get your word across and God bless every one of those YouTubers, every one of those Twitter follow, every one of those Twitter uh, users, every one of those Facebook users that's using their platform, whether you're in the left or the right, I don't care. Be vocal, get your point across. I'm open to hearing it. Even if I don't agree with you, I'm open to hearing it. I love it, man. I want to thank you for joining us today. We hit a lot of topics. Trust me, we could deep dive into this topic for another 30 minutes for damn sure. Uh, it's always fun for me. I mean, I'm sitting here as you're talking going, we did cover up. Oh, we'll bring you back and we could talk about it because I'm sure this isn't going to go away overnight. But well said, when it comes to voting, make sure you go out and rock the vote. And before you go rock the vote, make sure you smash that subscribe button. You see it right there in the corner. Give it a smash. Make sure you subscribe. Hit the bell so you get notified whenever To The Point is on. Uh, we want to thank our guest today, Mr. Rod Rodriguez, for joining us. Uh, make sure to go follow down into our notes, and you will see all the links to get a hold of Mr. Rod. So we want to thank you, bud, for joining us today, and can't wait to have you back on the show real soon. Military Matters Podcast, folks. Go subscribe. Go check out what we're doing. We just Our last episode was on information warfare. We talked about information warfare. Two weeks, oh, I'm sorry, a week before any of this happened, before executive orders on Twitter, before any of that. We were on it. We broke that story. Information warfare, it's about you. It is all about you. Go check it out wherever you listen to podcasts, Military Matters Podcast. You heard it there. Go do it. We're excited for our next guest. As you know, he's always on on our Wednesdays, but as we made this Military Monday, makes sense to have our Vet Pivot panel, to have our main man, Mr. Macachera here. And as always, as I tell you, as we lead into the show and into Matt's segment, I want you guys, why, after you're done watching the show, head over to your favorite subscription platform for podcasting. Type in Vet Pivot and subscribe and listen to the show. It's one of the best podcasts you're going to listen out there with guests that are going to give you some amazing insight from some of our former guests on our show to leaders of community and over at LinkedIn. So you're going to get all the tips and tricks from veterans. And just because you're not a veteran doesn't mean that this won't work for you. So I'm excited, as always, to welcome to our new Monday, Military Monday, our normal Wednesday, now Monday, on oh, so confusing all these different days. <laughs> but anyways, we're gonna bring on our guest, Mr. Matt Cachera. Matt, how are you? Hey, Eric, what's going on? Thanks for having me on. I'm good, bud. Crazy week. Very crazy week. A lot of weird stuff going on. Right? Like it feels like just the other day you were on the show and we were like, Yeah, you know, COVID nineteen, the country's opening back up. And then it's like an M80 went off in our hand. It's so weird yeah. that we're dealing what we're dealing with. And I shouldn't laugh. I mean, this is horrible. Uh, I know here on the West Coast, we've been affected. I know you live uh, in on the East Coast. I obviously. live outside of 
Yeah, just outside of Philadelphia, and Philadelphia is you know burning right now. That's it's uh, it's not necessarily the city of brotherly love at the moment. It's uh, it's it's pretty bad. Um, it's tough, right? Because we, you and I both served, and and it's Military Monday, so it's it's hard to recognize the America that we fought for at the moment. And that's I think what's been the hardest thing to come to terms with is, okay, well I gave away a lot of years of my life. And this is not what I thought I was sacrificing that for. I'm all for people peacefully assembling and and having their voice heard. But the the key word and all that is peacefully. Anytime you step into the bounds of rioting, lighting leagues on fire, looting, uh, assault, you know, and other crimes, now we're going too far, right? Now you're you know you're, you're doing just as much, or or you're doing bad things, just like uh, the people that you're you're pissed off at. So it's, it's really hard to, to watch it all go down. I want justice for, uh, for people like George Floyd, who, who went through, you know, something that, that no person should ever have to fear or go through in this country or, or in the world. Um, but this, there's, there's a better way to go about doing it. Yeah, I think you took the words right out of my mouth. There is a much better way to do it. And like I've said from the beginning, I've been on social a lot this weekend, basically trying to keep the calm because there's so many people who are just taking everything out of context. And the number one right. thing I said is I totally support the protesters, those folks who are directly feel that their community is just slapped in the face. I mean, our, our black brothers and sisters have had to deal with some racism that we've never had to deal with. At least I know yeah. I've never personally had to deal with it. And these horrible horrible hate groups have taken advantage of these folks at their moment where they want to step up and prevail and have turned to looting and burning things and just being outright evil taking something that's beautiful and a cool freedom that we have as much as you know we talk about our service but you know we defend the constitution and one of the great yeah. things is is the ability to lawfully protest right you're allowed to stand there and have right. those. i mean berkeley all of the things we read in our history books from the 60s, this is the most violent things I've ever seen. And I remember the 93 riots, right. but that was just in Los Angeles. This yeah. is, I mean, they had riots in Reno last night. I mean, this is crazy. This isn't big cities are just affected. It's everywhere. And a lot of these groups are in there. And I think it's one of the things, so I'm gonna, I'll, we'll lead off with this one for you. I mean, what do you think about these, the rumors that, I mean, and they're all unconfirmed rumors, but there's a lot that certain military units, active duty units, are put on ready alert right now to respond to this craziness. We already have a bigger National Guard in Minneapolis than we've ever had before. I mean, yeah. they have almost 20,000 troops on the ground there already. And I mean, obviously Minneapolis might be getting under control. I have not seen any footage. It's been Brooklyn and Philly most of the day. I know LA is kind of crazy also right now. I know Texas right. has a state of emergency. But what's your thoughts on if we bring in the active, the military? I know a lot of people out there who are watching, they don't know, really know. I've got a lot of text messages today, like, what's this mean? Does that mean they're gonna open fire? And I'm like, well, I don't think Antifa or Proud Boys or any of these hate mongering groups are gonna wanna mess with our 82nd or a Marine Corps infantry unit. Those are bad ideas. Uh, you know, you yeah. Might have to grab the third rail in the subway if you're planning on doing something as dumb as that. It's an ugly, ugly concept to to ponder. To be honest with you, you think about the. Um, can you hear me? I lost you. Test. Audio oh, wise. No. Test, 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 test. That's the cool thing about why we pre-record. Where is you go? my? I don't know. I was just. I on can hear you now. Hold on. Yep. Suddenly I lost you. Talk. Are you there? Right test. Now, yeah, now you are. Test mic. Okay, good. Uh, it's on weird. your end, Eric. Is it? Freaking, freaking uh, Marines. Uh, yeah. Well, you already heard my question, <laughs> so we can just... Well, I heard your question. Okay, Go. let's roll again. Uh, you know, it's a really tough thing to to ponder is, is oh my gosh, turning our, our own military against or on our citizens to... You know, really to, to bring back control, some order and discipline into the city so that, you know, there are people that are that are still going to work. There are people that have to get to work that aren't haven't been able to. Um, it's been difficult for for people to navigate the downtown areas in, in these cities that are not equipped for a situation like this. So, you know, I I don't. I don't want to see something like that, but at the same time, I think it's it's very possible that it 
you could see something along those lines happen where, yeah, you have the National Guard that's there. They've, they've been called to step in on situations like this before. Obviously, this is unprecedented. It's different than what we've seen. I would like to make mention that I don't think, obviously, nor do, do I want to insult the intelligence of the viewers, right? But I don't think this is all the people that are, are there just for George Floyd. I don't think they're there just to protest police brutality or, uh, you know, misuse of force. This is, this is a subset of that populace where you have these groups coming in and seeing it as an advantage to continue to increase chaos, uh, misinformation to uh, to kind of stir up some unrest in the civilian populace that makes people second guess their government and what's happening, and all of that is very, you know, calculated. They're doing this obviously to serve a, a different agenda. This is this has gone beyond police brutality. So it's really important to understand that piece of it. And if the National Guard were to be called in, it's to it's to go against these groups that are trying to bring domestic terror to the streets and cities uh, within this country. That's what we need to get a handle on and understand how to differentiate the two. You have peaceful protest and people that want justice for the murder of George Floyd, and then you have have these other uh, domestic terror groups that are are really taken to the streets and causing a lot of problems. That's good that you said that. Hold on, let me figure this. Out. I'm going to bring myself back. Ooh, no, that's... Uh, Jesus. Hey, ta-da. So that, that's great that you said that. Uh, you bring up a lot of good points. A lot of people, you know, they look at this and they're like, we agree with the protesters. We don't agree with the violence. We don't agree with the looting. Right. We, we understand that that has nothing to do with George Floyd and his family. I mean, even his family has said they don't want this. This is not something they want. Everyone's asking for peace. Unfortunately, we're not seeing peace, and yeah. I, and I'm almost wondering. I mean, obviously, this isn't what we decided to talk about, but I'm almost wondering if some of this is the chaos of being cooped up eight weeks, uh, being told all these things we can't do. I, I did hear an interesting opinion from uh, His Majesty Ice Cube, who did <laughs> say uh, that you know this is a long time coming in America. You now have people who want to speak up and speak out. And this is what you're doing. There's a lot of frustration. And I get that. The, you know, some communities in America have been harassed by police. For, I mean, and bad cops. Not all cops. But have been harassed. And it's something that's gone on. We, yeah. all, we all know the stories of Los Angeles, right? I mean, I was watching some of that footage yesterday going, I would not mess with LAPD just like I wouldn't mess with the boys over at NYPD. It just, they look scary. And I, you know, but it's just... And it's all young, dumb people doing it. It's not like you're seeing old yeah. folks around. Although in New York, I did see them. They were in Chelsea. There were some, some older dudes that are, like, walking around, taking pictures, waving on CNN. And I'm like, dude, you're failing right it's now. Such, Go home. You're going to get hurt. It's such a bad, yeah, it's such a bad situation. And those things are, you know, it's like having matchsticks next to, to dry forest. You know, it's just one of those things that you don't want to be there when it catches fire because it's going to get out of control quick. It's not the type of situation where you go and snap a selfie, right? So uh, just to say you were there, you might end up getting caught up in something that, that you had no business being a part of. So uh, I would obviously steer clear of it if it's, if it's not you that's down there doing it. If it is the, uh, uh, if you come across the wrong crowd and it's not just people that are marching for, for George Floyd, they're there for other reasons. It could be, it could be ugly quick. Uh, it's frustrating. I think to me is, as you know, as an American uh, works, pays taxes, uh, serve my country, my, you know, my wife served, served the country as well for 15 years. So, uh, between the two of us with 27 and a half years of service to the military and to this country. So to see it go the way that it's going right now, is really frustrating because it's not what we sacrificed and stayed away from our families and all that fun stuff for. Absolutely, absolutely. So let, let's talk about this as we jump in. You know, you know, folks are out there, they're trying to get a job. Now there's another thing kind of frustrating them. What advice do you give job seekers right now? There's 30, uh, 30 odd million of them. Uh, what advice would you give somebody? This is frustrating. This is another reason to beat you down and put you in this spiral where you end up as i've been today several phone calls coming across 
that have said, Eric, I'm really depressed. I'm crying. I feel America's at war. Is America falling? Is this civil? I mean, just people are kind of just in this horrible state of mind. And yeah. I'm thinking tomorrow's June, you know, you know, June 1st is now here. We're starting a new month. The country's opening up. All these things that are good. Yeah. And, and now you've got this that isn't going to go away, obviously, in the next few days. This is going to last a while, but unless I don't know what's happening. We still don't have three officers arrested or even charged with anything yet. We've only got one, and this is going. So what advice would you give to a job seeker if you had a couple of them in front of you right now? If you could, like, A, I know it looks bad, but, I mean, they still yeah. get up and still do your job, still go and try to find a job. I mean, people are gonna still going to hire. This isn't going to slow hiring. No, and that's that's the whole point. So the the main advice, and it's consistent with whether there's – there's riots in cities or if it's a normal Tuesday, right? You just remain calm, stay uh, focused on the prize, which is you're going to get a job and it will happen. Uh, but take a step back and allow yourself to take a breath and and just feel that release of pressure because it will happen. It's, it's, it's a matter of time and it's not the end of the world if it doesn't happen tomorrow or next week, but it will happen when it's supposed to happen. It's some of the advice that was given to me when I was transitioning out of the military that really kept me from getting inside my head too much. Half the game is this confidence game that you play with yourself, this tug of war between, I'm not good enough to get a job, I'm just coming out of the military, I just carried a weapon, or I just did you know X, Y, Z. Who am I to a civilian job market? And then the other half of you is saying, no, I got this. I've led people into battle. I've done, you know, X, Y, Z for my country, which is what makes me great. So it's, it's this internal struggle. I totally get it. I've been there. We've all been there. It will get better. You'll see the light at the end of the tunnel. You'll get this job offer and you'll feel this huge uh, relief off your shoulders. So uh, my first advice would be just take a step back, take a deep breath, woosah, right? Say, hey, it's going to be cool. Everything's okay. Uh, I will get a job. I will get hired. I got this kind of, you know, in the chest, right? It was that Matthew McConaughey does that in uh, Wolf of Wall Street, right? So he's like sitting there beating his chest and, and just kind of pumping himself up. If that's what you got to do, do that. You know, it's just one of those things that you know, win the head game first. I love that. That's that's very, that, that's sound advice. I like that. I mean, beat your chest, do that whole, yeah. I was thinking of the other scene where he's like, hey, what I want you to do. Is bring us two <laughs> martinis every minute on the minute uh, until we're either done with lunch or we pass out. Pick which one. I just, that's, <laughs> that's right. I, it's crazy. That's a true story. Uh, but you let can me do ask that part you, two. Yeah, that, that part <laughs> two. Do that. With drink. Don't drink. Don't do that, Vets. Uh, don't do that. Don't do that. But here, here's my <laughs> another one for you then. Uh, and okay. we started talking about this last week when you were on the show, and I mean it with all sincerity, especially now because now is. More than ever, this, what we're going to discuss is very important. If you're looking for a job, you have to remember they're looking at your social. They're going to. Everybody wants to know. It's not just your LinkedIn anymore where people are like, oh, just look them up, LinkedIn. No. They're going to look at what you tweet about, what you Facebook about, so you have options. Your options are lock your Facebook personal Facebook page down so you only have immediate family on it, or just watch what you say. I've always believed in... If you're looking for a job, you better be checking your Twitter to make sure you don't stick out and say anything dumb, have a Kevin Hart moment. I mean, unfortunately, we've seen that. I mean, even this week, talking about something stupid that jumped up and bit somebody, uh, the great Jimmy Fallon had to apologize for a skit he did over 20 years ago. So, I mean, so Matt, what do you say to these folks? Like, what are some social media, like, Good ideas. People want to be active. Obviously, this is a yeah. very weird time, right? Like, I want to be on my Twitter. I got to respond. I got to say something. But at the same time, you're looking yeah. for a job. And to make it even better, ladies and gentlemen, you're competing with 30 million people. So it makes the game even more fun. <laughs> it sounds like we should make a movie about this. So what advice, what's your tips and tricks for using social and still being you, but keeping it uh, G? I don't even go, don't even sure. be PG. Don't risk it. What's your advice? Yeah, I love the fact that you asked me this question because right now it feels so relevant to what's going on in our country. Uh, my rule number one is what's going to pay the bills? So <laughs> if you're putting something out there on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever your, your platform is, 
and you're going to get 14 likes out of it, maybe it's not worth it if it's going to end up costing you the job that's going to, you know, pay the bills, keep the roof over the head, food on the table type deal. So you got to kind of weigh the risk or reward there. Is it so important that you get your opinion out there to your 12 friends versus, you know, hey, I have a job that allows me to sustain my, my lifestyle. So my rule is, what is the risk reward? What am I gaining from putting my opinion out there on social media? Number two is, uh, obviously, I, I window shop social media. That's for the, if, it, if I'm not posting about vet pivot, chances are I'm not posting at all, right? That's, and that is the truth. And it hasn't always been that way, but it has definitely been that way since I transitioned from the military. And when I was going through that process, there was a lot of, okay, I'll go on LinkedIn and I'll share some of my insights as a leader, as a, as a, as a manager, as someone who's in the program project management field. I'll talk about those things. But on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, those those places were very much not that way. I was more window shopping, sharing photos of the family, stuff along those lines, because that's who I am. I also separated the vet pivot stuff from my personal profile. Personal profiles are locked down to people that I approve to be my friends versus, you know, the vet pivot stuff, which is out and open to the public, which is why I control that a little more stringently. So those are two areas where you want to kind of do a risk reward analysis and figure out, is it really worth me putting all this out there if it's going to end up costing me a job in the long run or getting me in hot water with my job uh, that I'm currently in? So those are the two things that you kind of have to balance out. And then obviously, uh, look, there's Everyone wants to share their opinion, I think, with social media, social distancing, uh, not being allowed to go out of the house. I think it's healthy to be on social media. It's, it helps people to talk to one another, to stay in touch, to share your life, what you're going through. And there's a lot of help there. There's definitely a lot of help where it's like, okay, I'm not alone. I'm not going through this by myself. I can see through my feed uh, that there are other people that are, that are going through something similar to what I'm going through. So by all means... Uh, engage and interact with the people that you're friends with, but just be smart about what you post and don't get wrapped up in everything that's going on in the country. Uh, kind of be a bystander, watch from a distance. And I know, you know, for some of you, that's going to be, you know, how can you do that? Just again, go back to the risk reward thing is what I'm saying on Facebook impacting anyone other than my circle of friends, or is it making a large widespread effect? Uh, that that's the, that's the question you really got to ask yourself. I think that's some solid advice. Absolutely. I mean, this this is the time. I mean, don't risk it on there. I always I always tell people. I remember when we were doing this back in the day, telling athletes and even folks I worked with in tech, use social and think about the ways that you're typing it, like your grandma was reading it. Right. <laughs> I mean, it's just safe. I mean, you don't yeah. want to be that person because you've seen a lot of celebrities. Like I mentioned, Kevin Hart lost the Oscars for something that yeah. he wrote, and obviously. There's that fine line, and we talked about it with Rod right before you came on. I don't know if you heard, but you know, Rod and I were discussing the fact that social media, you shouldn't be judged. Now, 20 years, we all say stupid things, and yeah. I'm not saying that you should be judged for that, but obviously, if you're writing things current with this, I don't even want a dumpster fire that we <laughs> call what this literally. past weekend has been, literally, uh, you know, you got to be careful what you're saying. It's easy to get drawn into a fight with somebody who wants to make this political, but that just makes you look bad. Don't get drawn into it. Don't try to go pick fights, especially if you only have 12 followers. It's just yeah. definitely not worth it. You know, Matt, I want to thank you again. I, I love having these segments. Uh, hopefully next week we can dive into topics that don't deal with rioting or COVID-19. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's kind of annoying that we never get to just have a normal person conversation. We've just been right. dealing with COVID and this. So hopefully by next week, we'll be somewhere along the line of better. Uh, I just want to make sure that you say, stay safe, my friend. Uh, and, and who's on this week on uh, Vet Pivot? I know that uh, you have some episodes coming out. I know you Ooh, dropped two a week. I do. So let's, pl so let's talk about that. those before you go. Absolutely. I have Dan Goldenberg from the Call of Duty Endowment. Uh, he's the director of that uh, organization. Very, very cool. Yes, Call of Duty, like the game, it's the philanthropic arm of the game of Call of Duty. Very, very cool guests. They've helped 
uh, with their grant teams hire more than 69,000 vets since 2012 at a far less uh, cost per placement than the Department of Labor is spending on theirs. So very, very interesting uh, topics of conversation, very cool statistics and metrics shared in that one. And then I'm going to follow that up on Thursday's episode with Matt Lewis, who's a retired Army lieutenant colonel, wrote the book Mission Transition. Also chock full of statistics, very cool stuff with what he's doing in the uh, in the VA, uh, you know, ETS sponsorship program, the veteran collaborative, some of the stuff that uh, that he's talking about is very, very cool. Outstanding. I, I look forward to I look forward to listening to that. So hopefully everybody else <laughs> make sure they go in there. And like we always how we always end every time. Remember the way I started this. I want you to remember head over to wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. And if you're not listening to podcasts, what the hell? Start listening to podcasts and put the first one in there. Make it vet pivot. So you go over there, subscribe to it, give a good review after you listen to a couple episodes. And uh, then when you're done with that, I want you to smash that subscribe button that you see right there. Smash it. Subscribe, hit the notification so you know when we're on. Uh, Matt, I want to thank you, bud, for joining us today. Uh, Tough subjects to talk about, but we got through it. Uh, Stay safe, and we'll chat with you next week. Thanks, Eric. You too. So everybody, that is uh, that was Matt Kachere. We're talking again from Vet Pivot, and, I, and I'm not kidding. Go check out the podcast. It's it's good. You'll learn something. You'll pick apart. And just like I say every week, just because we have Military Monday, any tips and tricks we give you, they're not just designed for veterans. Anyone can use them. So don't feel like, oh God, I'm not a vet. I can't use this. Yes, you can. 30 million people unemployed. We want to help you. Transition is important. We talk about it because we kind of transition hasn't changed in a hundred years. It feels like in the military. So if you're out there, you're unemployed, but you're not a vet, listen to our tips and tricks. They do apply to you. Just instead of talking about the things that we talk about military service, apply it to you. And if you have questions, feel free to DM the show. We'll put them up to Matt and see if he can answer some of your questions. If you're a civilian and you have a question, we'd love to answer them for you. And our final guest today is a good friend of the show. You've seen him on here. We were, had them on two weeks ago when they were announcing the release of their album. Space Force was releasing their album. Uh, we have Topher from the band Space Force, whose album dropped May 29th. We're not here to talk about music, although we'll talk a little bit about it at the end. But what we want to focus on today, Topher and I are going to have a very in-depth conversation, talk about what's going on in America when it comes to these riots that have ravaged our country these past few days. I'd like to welcome my good friend to the show, Topher. And I kind of told him the same thing. It's like, man, when I looked at that, I didn't look at at that as a black man. I just looked at it as an American citizen, as as a person. Like, what is your mindset to do that to any individual, right? And I feel like this is the modern-day Emmett Till. Because I remember how Emmett Till's death um, shocked the world. You know, back then and and how everyone felt it wasn't just something that was um, felt in the black community. But when they did an open casket and you had the media running the photos and everything, it sent uh, sent a shockwave through everybody's heart and mind. And I feel like that's what we have right now with um, George Floyd. And, you know, plus it was publicized. You know, we had cameras everywhere. And it's just one of those times that I feel like this is when that that change and everyone's going to really open up their antennas and listen to what the people who have been, you know, experiencing police brutality for years have to say, you know, and as Martin Luther King said, he never, he never um, justified or, or um, condoned the riots, but he did understand riots. And that's why he said a riot is the language of the unheard. But he also said this, if we're going to be, if we want to prevent this, he said the only um, what do he say? He said social justice and progress are the only guarantors of a riot prevention. That's the only way we're going to prevent riots from continuing to spread. And if anything is going to be swift, I think it needs to be justice and policies and progress. The people in America are tired. I'm tired just, you know, as a minority. I'm, I'm tired just for anyone in general. I'm just tired of seeing the police get away with so many things. Once again, I love the law enforcement. I'm prime military, so I have nothing against my, my, my brothers and sisters in uniform. But we got to do better. We got to get some better, um, <clears throat> um, I'm trying to say, um, what do you call it? The law of, not law, um, 
But we just got to get a better uh, way of approaching situations and just put in better words. But we got to get a better way of doing that, because right now what we're seeing is it's unjustified. It's, it's oh, it's very extreme. And I feel like when if we was overseas with the same um, approach, yeah, it'd probably be like, um, you know, uh, war crimes and everything else that be thrown our way, which is, you know, it's just kind of how it feels right now. And I feel like as American citizen, we should be have the type we should have the highest uh, priority and we should have the highest value of life when it comes to these altercations. But we so many times we have seen it. And I'm not so blind to the fact to give into the media's narrative that this is just a black only experience. Um, I remember Tony Temple, who uh, experienced a similar situation. You know, he died in police custody. Um, knee on the back, you know, died from physical restraint and exertion and all that. Very similar to George Floyd. Um, the police officers got off, so they were not um, charged. The DA in Dallas uh, dismissed the charges. And, and I'm just like, man, this happens to everybody. So I just I'm just glad that people are coming together. But we do need to separate the protesters from the rioters. And that's what we have an issue with right now. As you said before, you know, Antifa's in your in Portland, right? Oh, yeah, they're, they're, they're live. They're they're kicking really well. I mean, but they're endorsed by the mayor and the governor. They do nothing about it. They call out the alt right groups, but they never call out the alt left group that does 100 percent more damage. I mean, that's just the stuff that we've seen here. I mean, these folks have no problem vandalizing and burning, burning anything, and they seem to be protected. I've never seen this in my life. And I mean, from my perspective, watching everything over the weekend, it's, there's a legitimate gripe. There's a legitimate, we have a racism problem in our country that is, it's not, let's not sugarcoat it. I mean, it, it dates back to the i mean well beyond my years and birth of the nation <laughs> yeah i mean the whole freaking country is based off it right i mean we had a civil war based off of it you know we have lincoln's proclamation everything is based upon it and you know i, I loved i don't know if you had a chance to catch and this is nothing political but the mayor of atlanta her speech friday night i felt was the most unifying speech that any mayor has given where she when she broke it down, she's like, good God, this is Atlanta. This is where Dr. King is from. This is, everything's created here. She's like, I, I have a son who's 18 years old. I called him up and I said, where is your black ass at? Get home. This is not where you need to be. I thought it was hilarious because she just went off. And then she brought up, she's like, you're looting on the west side. T.I. and Easy, well, what, I don't know. He's a Killer Mike. There we go. I remembered his name. Yeah, Killer, Killer Mike. They... They built that whole area. They put these businesses. You're burning your own people's businesses down to the ground. And she's like, you're not doing it to remember George Floyd. You're running out of a liquor store. She's like, that ain't doing anything. I thought that was so good that maybe we could turn that around. But here we are, and it hasn't. This is still continuing on. So here's, here's what I have for you. You're in the music industry. Yeah. Uh, you see uh, both Ice Cube and Ice T. I don't know. Both the Ice guys are... They're both on social, and you know, I have. I think both of them are, are very talented. Uh, Ice Cube, especially growing up, uh, I'm that weird kid that listened to NWA and Eazy E. That was, you know, that's that's my shit right there, man. And to that's see, I, you know, tell see Ice take this whole new route. I mean, I get Ice uh, Ice T. I mean, whatever. I mean, he's like that OG guy that you know he was. Okay, he was probably the first person ever to you know you know cop killer and all that fun stuff that he says, but I mean, his tweets the last four days have been nothing but fire starters and sparking and encouraging this chaos to the fact that you yes. see more and more people in the music industry. I mean, we've got Justin Timberlake. What's your thoughts on so many people in the music industry being in, not supporting the protesters, but supporting the rioters? I mean, there's a clear line here in the sand and they're not supporting the protesters. Oh, they're there for George Floyd. No, they're not. They're bailing out these turds that are throwing rocks and water bottles and starting fires. Yeah, so speaking of that, man, um, well, one of the things I want to bring up is Ice Cube and Ice-T need to be put on ice um, because they've been spreading false information. And one of the things I saw Ice Cube retweet, and because we, we talk about Twitter all the time when it comes to President Trump and how they're big on, you know, fact-checking people, but they never fact-check Ice Cube. 
and others, you know, who spread false information when it came to uh, Derek Chauvin. And remember, they had the, uh, the guy, I think the guy's name, Jonathan Riches, who's a professional political troll. And they kept saying there was a picture of him, but to make whites great again. And that wasn't his photo. But Ice Cube and everyone was sharing information and, and no one said anything. Another one of the things I saw was, uh, like you said, uh, Justin Timberlake and Taylor Swift coming out. All of a sudden, they're social justice warriors, and they're bailing out all these Antifa uh, members. Imagine if they came. Imagine if anyone came out and bailed out any all right members, man. It, we wouldn't hear the end of it. But I think I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna give credit to um, Lil Wayne. I don't know if you heard about what, what, what Lil Wayne said, but he's one of the few artists. He's just like, guys, d d stop saying all cops are bad. You know, let, let's let's stop all the burning and stuff, and let's let's be real about this. And the reason he has that perspective is because you know he was saved and pretty much um, helped by a white cop when he was a kid, and I tell people all the time, that's why I don't have so much hate for people. It's not because of my experiences, but as they say, your perception is not reality. People say that all the time, my perception is a reality. No, it's not. If I believe the sky is green, but it's, you know, but the sky is actually blue, <laughs> then my per perception is not reality. It is what I perceive. So if you're growing up in that experience and you perceive people um, wearing uniform as always beating you or harassing you, then you're going to believe that. But that's not reality. And, we have to, and that's why I'm big on looking at empirical data. And going back and forth and looking at studies because we have to get back to the reality of the situation. That way we can actually tackle the true core of the issues. And and another um, artist you brought up was Killer Mike. And I, I love what Killer Mike said when he was talking about. Uh, <laughs> uh, and I actually want to say that I loved when he called out CNN. <laughs> so when he called out CNN and said, hey, guys, you got to stop spreading um, false information and fueling the fire. You got to, you know. Um, it's not having a situation and for you to be a mainstream media um, outlet. It, it just doesn't help. A lot of people, you have a lot of ears and eyes on you and you should be promoting positivity instead of just over here promoting negative negativity. And one of the things he said, uh, and which I've been preaching on and talking to people all the time is, you know, uh, yes, you know, you're, you may feel your voice is unheard. But what is I just think you're speaking the wrong language. You know, pe people don't understand you when you riot, but people understand you when you vote. People understand you when you boycott. People understand you when you out in front of their yard with signs and, and you're doing it peacefully. You know, and then a lot of people like to point to, well, you know, Martin Luther King took a bullet to the head because he was peacefully protesting. I said, so did Malcolm X. And he was not peacefully protesting. But the only difference was because I'm big on like limited government. Martin Luther King was killed by the government. <laughs> he wasn't killed by his homie or some people he had interaction with. So that tells me that he had he was doing the real progress that we've been seeking for years. And so we need to get back to that. Um, that uh, or at least we need as a conservative. I feel like we need to start back claiming the narrative because a lot of times I'm seeing agitators. I see a lot of big TikTokers and, and people that's just like pro black people that's coming out saying, yes, that's right. We're going to ride. We're going to loot. Um, y'all, y'all placing higher priority on um, infrastructure and buildings than you are on the lives of black people. So we're going to burn it to the ground, which is like that's that's not, you know, you are pretty much conflating or at least um, having a false equivalency and, and trying to make that comparison. But it's not what we're doing. We're saying two wrongs don't make it right. But I, I agree, man. We just we need to do something. So, you, as you know, you've been on the show before. You know, I like to ask those questions that most people won't ask. So I'm going to ask this question to you, and you can tell me to F off if you don't like it. Uh, I'm fair. I, I give you that fair warning. Um, no, you know, one of the big things I've heard over the last four days is I don't understand because I'm a white guy. Uh, mm. I guess my 44 years on Earth, have I haven't seen anything or experienced it. The truth of the matter is, yes, I have never been targeted because of the color of my skin, but my friends have. I've been yeah. there firsthand and seen it. I've also been around fellow white people who say some pretty racist ass shit, and it's a real, you know, I, I know it exists. So mm -hmm. when does it stop that we're in 2020? How come we all can't be unified, right? We are when we wear our uniform, right? You and I both were brothers uh, in arms. We both proudly raised our right hand. We've had this discussion on the 50th uh, episode anniversary of vet pivot when we talked about isn't it funny that they don't when they count veterans they don't count sex branch rank male female or your skin color right it's just you're a veteran so i look at this as it's 2020 we're in a whole different place our country i mean everything is so normal to us i mean 
Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't matter. Same sex. Nobody cares. Like pride is just something that you're used to. You just don't care. So when is it going to be that there's not this division, that there is folks, and there's a lot more than there was during Dr. King's time that will join hands, and it's not a random priest who's in the photo. You have more and more, you know, Caucasian Americans and everybody else supporting this movement and understanding we have a voice and we're, and we're standing with you, yet there's people out there that are attacking, and I was one of them who was attacked because I brought up Dr. King. I studied both Dr. King and Malcolm X at length while I was in school. Uh, I understand the difference between the two of them and how they both, even when they had their meeting, their differences, right? One comes from, you know, the Nation of Islam and Dr. Farrakhan, who had Malcolm killed. And then you have Dr. King, who, as you covered, <laughs> the government took care of, which is horrible. But they both had the same measure when it came to civil rights. Yeah. But I've been told, oh, Dr. King was horrible. Like, you know, he would, you know, and I'm like, oh, and they're like, every white person is leaning on Dr. King. And I'm like... Well, Dr. King probably, to me, was one of the greatest civil rights leaders of our times, uh, especially the modern era. And I think now we're all doing our part. Those of us who want to be on the right side of the tracks and not be scumbags and put our head in the gutter and want anarchy, we want everybody, we consider everybody equal. We don't look, I've never been like, no, that person. I mean, my kids struggle believing that there's a time where we put other Americans on the back of the freaking bus. Like, they just don't get it. They're like, what the hell? Yeah. What do correct. you mean? Like, except my daughter, 15, it blows her away. So when do we get to the point where it's, I don't want to say safe, but for those of us that we can, we want to stand up and be side by side, but we face ridicule from all sides, standing up with our brothers and sisters to be one voice and speak up. Now, again, I support law enforcement, but there's bad freaking cops. And yeah. I mean, and three of the four, there's only one other Caucasian involved in this. There's a Tongan, there's an Asian man, and I forget the other, a Samoan, right? So yeah, these yeah. aren't, this is it. this, yes, the officer who killed George Floyd was a white man. Yes, absolutely. This is beyond, this isn't a race thing. I never believed this. I believe this to be a police brutality thing that our right. friend Anonymous brought up, brought up today in his video release. He brought up all the repeated criminal acts that have taken place within the Minneapolis Police Department. Mm-hmm. And granted, these have taken place. I mean, let's not forget Rampart in LA in the 90s was just as corrupt. So I don't think this is a race thing. It's been turned into that because the media loves that. CNN and Fox love to spin it as a race thing. This is a police brutality issue that they do target, especially men of color. We've mm-hmm. That's proven. We don't even need to like sugarcoat this shit. How do we, ch- number one, how do we change this? How do we change the narrative that we all can stand up for each other? And it's not some weird taboo thing that it should only be, you know, one side of the house able to stand up. Shouldn't we all be able to stand up and stand together and speak in one voice? Well, you know, um, speaking of Malcolm X, I think he had the best um, analogy when it came to uh, the white liberal and the conservative back in the day. Right. He was saying that um, the white liberal is more like a fox while the white conservative is more like a wolf. Right. So the fox would more than likely end up with the lamb on his on his dinner plate because he would be smiling and friendly and, and they would come close to him and then get him. But the wolf, you know, is a wolf. So you just avoid him. I feel like that's what's happening right now is the what um, it's been so long and, and the, the, of the years of just white people leading the charge. Like we I always tell people, man, I, I'm, I'm big with Frederick Douglass and just leaving black people alone. It's just. We don't, we don't want any charity. We don't want affirmative action. We don't want anything. Just don't obstruct us. Just don't get in our way. Like, that's, that's all we want. Um, and if we fail at that point, then that's us. You know, that's on us. But we don't want any help. And what's, what's the issue I've seen is we have so many um, white people that's coming in and helping us out. And even now, you know, I, I see so many white people come up and preaching and trying to use their platforms, but they're just steady, steady talking about it. It's like we don't need you talking about it. We need you just sitting back. And if you want to share your platform, share your platform, you know, just share it, you know, the, uh, share our videos, you know, share our voices. Um, let, let, let us be heard. You know, if you're going to if you're going to go to a protest, um, I don't, we don't need you grabbing the microphone. We need you sitting back, maybe provide security. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, make absolutely. sure we're safe and that we can get our voices across um, or using your resources to make sure that, you know, the, the police force or the elected officials or whoever's going to be there, you know, that's what we need. We And um, 
and, and I'm just been I've been on that for the longest. So I'm very pro limited government just because I don't trust the government it is what it is. You know, um, you know, I, I don't trust they can do the best job versus local people and what we do for ourselves. Um, but I think one of the things we need to do off the bat is just really introduce some policies that's going to show the people that we care. You know, even if we do it locally first, like let's start locally. Let's let's go vote for somebody. Um, I always encourage the um uh, my black community to vote outside of the Democrat Party, which has pretty much crippled us in the last, you know, 80 years or so. So um, I, I'm asking them to vote for Republican or someone else other than the people that have, you know, pretty much been a champion in our eyes, but behind our back underhandedly destroyed us or at least crippled us a little bit. And I don't like that. So, um, I don't know, man. It's it's just one of those things, man. If you, if you out there, if you're listening, and you just want to help out, that's my best advice to you. And if you go listen to others, they'll pretty much say the same thing. Is um, we 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 got voices. We got some of the most intellectual people you ever see in your life. So we got people that can think. You know, we don't need people thinking for us. And what Joe Biden said about <laughs> about black people, like if you if you're having a choice, hard choice, but picking between me or Trump, then you ain't black is the exact sentiment that um, is is the problem or at least showing us the issue that we see with white liberals is you questioning my race because I'm thinking a certain way. I don't, I don't need you doing that. I don't need you thinking that you know what's best for me. You know, I just need you to get out of my way and allow me to figure it out. Even if we get it wrong the first couple of years by ourselves, you know, just just let us be ourselves. And I'm all for that. And you know, I'm, I'm never. Um, for unity, I hate that race is a social construct. I hate it's here. You know, I despise it, but it is here. It's a thing. And one of the things people say all the time is, you know, you know, by 2050, by was it by 2050, we're going to I think whites are no longer be the majority in America. I think they're going to become a minority. I'm very interested in seeing how this going to play out, because right now they're using that as an excuse to why so much racism is supposed to going on or why the world is in America. My thing is this. I don't think it's going to change. The reason why I don't think it's going to change is because we're looking at the wrong issues. And so we got to really get together and tackle the real stuff that's at hand and understand that we don't need these all these handouts. We don't need all this government involvement. And it's OK to be separate. You know, we, we want to be, you know, segregation is, is telling me where I can and cannot go. Separation just says I can go where the heck I want to go. Right. So if I don't want to hang out with you, it's cool. If, if, if I'm black and I want to hang out with these white people, live near white people, that's fine. Let me go live. Let me go live by myself. I'm not causing nobody any harm. And if white people want to live, leave the neighborhood for certain reasons or whatever, let them leave. They're not racist for doing so. We, we're just we, we're just so sensitive to, I don't know, just racism in general. And that's why I hate it. And then we just throw it around and. I'm hoping we get to the point, like you said, that we can just just be like, hey, man, I don't like you because I don't like you. You know, ain't got nothing to do with your skin color. I don't like you because your breath stink. Like, I don't like you because, you know, you wore that gray shirt today. You know, I don't like you because, um, you know, you, you slept with my baby mama, something, you know, just those things versus my skin color, man. So, but yeah. I love that answer. I think that was the the best answer that I've seen to this because I've seen that question posed throughout the weekend and nobody has been clear on it, right? It's on social people you're attacked uh, for doing just about anything and everything. But I mean, we've reached a point where watching the protest becomes frustrating because I, I was watching CNN, I hate to say it, but I was because our friends at Fox were talking about something else. And they've had, I mean, there has been a couple times this, this week, and I will give kudos to CNN, that they did an amazing job actually getting in there. They did uh, interview some protesters yesterday crossing a bridge. Uh, I forget what it's called. There's a bridge that they were trying to do a peaceful protest. March. Oh, that was in um, Connecticut. That was, it was yeah, somewhere, it was yeah. In I Minnesota. Remember. Yeah. Minnesota. Was yeah. it Minnesota? Yeah, and he was like... We're just trying to be peaceful. We're not here to do that. And we're, I mean, and I've seen it. You've seen the footage that's breaking today of BLM members attacking Antifa, who's trying to get rocks, grabbing his ass and throwing him over to the cops and, and arresting him. This is what we need. This is what the media should be focused on. Instead, you're seeing crews following around with the media. But then you see again, I'm a big fan of our constitutional rights. 
And when I see yes. the media being attacked by law enforcement, uh, we saw it Friday morning, CNN being arrested. Uh, you know, their cameraman, by the way, <laughs> the only black man that was there reporting, four other news crews were right nearby. The cops were like, hey, just move, move out of the way. They go after the, the brother man who's just standing there reporting. And I mean, give it to the dude who got arrested. He's like, dude, here's my credentials. This is C. I mean, they're marked up. I mean, if you work for yeah. one of the big networks, you're branded pretty well. Trust me, you're not sugarcoating what you're doing. And I mean, we've seen that. So it's it's this nasty cross. We talk about the media, I think, is one problem we have. The media causes a lot of panic and scares people or they sugarcoat the absolute truth. And we're never going to get to the bottom of anything and nothing's going to get fixed in our country if we're constantly going to have them dictate the way we think. And people need to learn how to use this and listen to smaller shows and radio shows. Because, I mean, come on, you were interviewed in Australia. People are watching what our country is doing. And it's not a good look that we have right now. I mean, this isn't, I mean, we're treating something that we've, I'm trying to make sure I stay in picture here. We're treating this like, like this is normal and it's not. I mean, we're coming back from a pandemic and now we're burning our country to the ground. I mean, to me, there's a lot of tinfoil hat shit we could go run with this because it just seems weird. It's all organized. They're burning. COVID, you know, COVID has disappeared. No more numbers going up. You know, just nobody's just, social distancing. Just, just, all of a sudden COVID just is we're fine. Uh, it, it doesn't make sense to me. But anyways, we could talk for this subject uh, online uh, about this forever. So. Before you go, I do want to change it to a brighter spot and okay. talk real fast that your group, Space Force, dropped your album on Friday, May 29th. Yay, yay. Uh, and you can get that like I led with. You can go there for Spotify, Apple Music, wherever you get your music, you can find it there. Uh, so go download it. I mean, how's that feel getting that out finally after you guys worked on that and getting that out? Man, um, it, it's, it's a great feeling. Uh, uh, shout out to my boy, uh, the Marine rapper for, you know, I'm not saying, you know, he was the reason why it took so long, but his, 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 it's just, you know, as a Marine, you just want to be very precise. And that's what it was. He just, he wanted to make sure when we delivered the, the mission was going to be accomplished, but Space Force, uh, Rocket Science is the name of the album. It is out. You can go check it out on SoundCloud, anything, like I said, Spotify, Apple Music, and follow us on Instagram, Space Force Radio. Um, I think we're also on Facebook as Space Force Radio. And it's some great songs. Um, one of the songs I would recommend is Galaxy and Nowhere. It's one of our most popular songs off the album. And it was, you know, just great. Uh, all veteran group. And, yeah, just doing big things for the galaxy, you know. And, I, and one thing I love about Space Force is, you know, it's, it's very, uh, it's, it's in a realm of fantasy. So it allows me to escape to a different place and just be different. You know, I don't have to talk about um, all the craziness that's going on right now. Um, I could just talk about, you know, aliens that were chasing out the planets we're destroying, you know, ships as we're, you know, soaring across the, the, the Milky Way. And it's, it's unique and it's always fun when I team up with those guys because they're just incredible. But thank you, uh, Eric, for uh, giving us that pitch, man, and that plug. And hopefully everyone listens to it. And if you do, let us know. We um, we would love for you to tag us. Uh, we would love to share your experiences. If you have videos or whatever, we would love to share to our fan base as well. Awesome. We're going to add it to the link. So scroll down here on YouTube and you will find it right there for you to grab and go uh, get the music right now and check them out. And we'll make sure we put their social links in there too so you can follow them because it is entertainment. And go follow these guys on you know, TMR, obviously follow Topher, and uh, check out them on TikTok. They're beyond entertaining. Uh, you, know, you guys have a good TikTok. It's fun to watch your guys' TikTok. Uh, I've, I get stuck down that rabbit hole and it's a scary, scary, it's like four hours later. I'm like, holy crap, I've been doing this for way too long. But I do want to thank you for coming on, man. Uh, it, it's important that we talk about this, I, I think, as we sit down at the table. And I think the great thing is, as veterans, we can actually do that and enjoy this conversation and get the word out there. Because there's a lot of people who tune in and they just don't understand and they're not going to get it on TV. Let's face it. People say, oh, what kind of media do you watch? And I'm like, I actually hate all of it because to me it's so controlled by the wrong people who really don't care. They don't have a voice for ourselves. You know, the voice of the veteran is important. There's so many of us out there. You know, mm -hmm. it is a job a lot of us take when we get out as law enforcement, right? I mean, it's putting yeah. on a uniform. We see it. So 
you know, we don't want to get lopped into this whole, like, we're all this one way. And I think our country is, our country was doing good till COVID showed up. I thought we were, I thought we were doing damn good. COVID showed up and everybody lost their damn minds. And it's just, I don't know. It's so, I could go rain on this for forever and I don't want to take any more of your time for coming on our show today. But thank you for coming on and talking about these tough topics. We'll have you on real soon to continue on. I'm sure this unfortunate event will still be going on uh, even after the fires are gone and cities start to rebuild. I'm almost positive we'll have another incident. Uh, it's unfortunately the way it works around here. But I do want to thank you to come on. Remember, everybody, go check out the new album by Space Force. And thanks, Topher, for coming on, bud. We appreciate you. Thank you, Eric. Thanks, bud. And that's our show for today, folks. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Got some good information. We, I know we went deep diving into topics that we normally don't talk about here on this show, but we deep dive today. Hopefully that you're able to do that. So I want to thank all of our guests today, Topher, Matt, and my good bud Rod for coming on and talking about the state of our country and talking about these riots. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please go ahead and leave them in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. And if you'd like to be a guest on our show, feel free to email us at hello at tothepointtv.com. And don't forget while you're there to hit the subscribe button on our YouTube right there. Hit that subscribe button and make sure that you get notified for whenever a new episode or segment drops. We want to thank you guys for tuning in. As always, it's important to me on behalf of our entire team here at To The Point. We thank you for watching. Again, I'm Eric Mitchell. Be safe, be strong, and be smart. God bless America.